Supervisor Jim Desmond, that very question, he joins us now. We were talking about a sea change, sir, as it relates to the County Board of Supervisors. But before we make that statement, are there enough uncounted votes to change the outcome of that election in District 3? Um, you know, I, I doubt it. Um, you know, maybe there might be an outside possibility, but it doesn't, doesn't look like there's going to be a change. I, mean, I think there's still about 370,000 ballots out there, but the margins are pretty uh, great. Uh, I think in both the uh, district one and district three that I, I don't, unfortunately, I don't think it's going to change much. All right. And just getting back to the district three, I think a lot of people were rating that race a toss up. Is the margin of victory say anything to you? Well, yeah, it, it, it's, you know, there's a more of a progressive uh, uh, group of people now that are that are voting, going, going and out and voting. And so we got a, a new person in District 3. I thought it was going to be a lot closer than it was. But, um, you know, it's uh, somebody else that I'm going to be working with. Uh, looking forward to seeing what she brings to the table. And, and uh, but it is it is uh, it was a great uh, uh, loss than, than anybody I think anticipated. Yeah, you know, for the longest time, the board of uh, county board of supervisors had sort of a unity of purpose, and now you're gonna it's gonna go from that unity to, you know, from a consensus view to a a debate view. Does it make your job harder now? Well, you know, it it it, it possibly makes it a little bit harder, but uh, you know, we we still agree probably on 90, 95 percent of the the issues that are out there, you know, behavioral health and, and those type of issues that are that are facing uh, the, um, you know, the county. You know, we differ probably on the marijuana issue and things like that, but um, and, and maybe some of the budgeting and, and things, issues like that. I, you know, for me, my priorities are, aren't going to change. It's, it's always been, you know, public safety, you know, fiscal responsibility and getting the economy going again. And I think those are kind of the basics that we have to stick to, you know, moving forward. So those my, those are my priorities. That's where I'm going to I'm going to stay at. And I think, you know, we all have to sort of come along in that direction. I mean, this is the first time we used reserves in, you know, for, as far as anybody can remember. And we used you know, several hundred, several hundred million in reserves. And so we're, you know, we're going to have to build that back up. So I think there's there's going to have to be some some back to basics uh, going on, and you know we're going to be hearing new ideas from we got the three new uh, county board of supervisors coming on here. Um, Mr. Fletcher and I are going to be the veterans at uh, having two years in each. Yeah, but you you talk about fiscal responsibility and building back up the reserves. You're now are going to be uh, sitting in a boardroom where people are going to want to maybe even tap into those reserves more and spend more money. Isn't that going to be a source of contention? Uh, potentially it will be because I'm going to be, you know, I, even when I first ran, I was, I was a person that said, hey, we need to keep our reserves. We have to have it. And, you know, people say, well, we, we should spend them. But here we have coronavirus happen. Now, we didn't spend all our reserves, but we're saving some now for if we have a big fire or something like that. So I think it's prudent and, and it's been proven that we need to have strong reserves and when they come you know, and, and have them available when we need them. So it, it might be a little bit uh, more of an argument and I may lose some of those more of those arguments. But, um, you know, you can only, we're all picking fruit from the same tree. The tree got less fruit on it now and we can't kill the tree. So we, we, we got to keep, uh, you know. I, I think with those kind of basics that uh, move it forward. Well, sir, it's it's rare that you and I have a conversation of this length without COVID-19 and and uh, lockdowns sure. and shutdowns being part of the conversation. So the, uh, it looks like we're headed back to the purple tier. Do you, uh, can you confirm that consensus? Well, I can't until the governor speaks uh, today at noon. We uh, I haven't seen the you know the adjustments that they made. Our numbers alone were in purple, but we're, we haven't seen the adjustments, and, and those are going to come out at noon today. I I have a feeling we're going to probably stay in purple, but I, I can't really tell you for sure. So uh, the mayor has seems seems to be in your camp uh, in, a, in an increasingly louder voice as far as wanting to open things up more rapidly. Does that? Does the mayor's uh, voice add uh, any help to your cause? Hallelujah, we'll take all the voices we can. I think we can do this safely. I think we've proven we can do it safely. You know, the difference between going between purple and, and, and red, you know, it, to be in red, you have to have seven or less people te testing positive out of 100,000 people. You're in the purple means you have eight or more people testing positive out of 100,000 people. And for that, does it really mean that we need to you know, close down restaurants? We need to close down churches and gyms and things like that over having a difference of 
you know, between seven or eight people. I think, you know, that margin is, is pretty tight and, and really needs to have more of a common sense approach and, and um, you know, allowing, you know, we shouldn't be punishing businesses for, you know, robust testing and the difference between seven or eight people per 100,000. On that note, sir, we'll call it a conversation. Uh, I'll let you get, get back to work and we'll chat again pretty darn soon. All right, Paul. Thanks. Jim Desmond, everybody. Apologize for